Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> this meeting of the Essex County Board of County Commissioners is hereby called to order due to the COVID-19 outbreak and to be in compliance with the governor's executive order, this meeting is being conducted remotely. The public is able to view this meeting via live stream on Facebook and YouTube. A link for the live stream is posted on the commissioner website. To all participating in this meeting, please be mindful to put your microphone on mute until speaking. Additionally, please identify yourself by putting your name on the record each time before you speak. Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner <clears throat> Cooper. Absent. Commissioner Gill. Here. Commissioner Graham. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Luciano. Absent. Commissioner Mercado. Here. Commissioner Siebel. Here. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Here. Commissioner President Richardson. Here. And we will uh, omit the salute to the flag since we are meeting remotely. However, let us pause for a moment of silence for all of those who have lost their lives due to COVID and any other unfortunate uh, incidents. Thank you. I have before me certification from the clerk that this meeting is in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Madam Clerk, are there any transcripts to be approved? Uh, Mr. President, there, there is one for conference board meeting September the 1st, 2021. Commissioner, any questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Seabold and a second from Commissioner Vice President Pomares to approve the transcript. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Seabold. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano, absent Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper, absent. Commissioner Vice President Palmares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Madam Clerk, are there any, any topics of discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Uh, we have an update from the administration on the CARES Act and the American Rescue Plan. All right, very good. Mr. Jackson. Good evening, Mr. President, members of the board. Um, Anthony Avaleo has worked closely with the administration over the years on these uh, two programs. We're going to give you an update on where we are and uh, where we appear to be going uh, under these two programs. Uh, Mr. Avaleo. Thank you, Anthony Avaleo. Uh, I'd like to first go over really what the two programs, what they gave us, where we're at as far as available balances, then I'll go through the categories of the expenditures. The uh, CARES Act, the county got up front approximately 139 million. There's about a million five left in that program. That program will end at the end of this year. That program will be fully expended by that time. As far as the American Rescue Plan is concerned, they gave us two installments. The first installment coming approximately in June of this year of 77 million 480, with the second installment coming June of next year. Uh, so the first installment was inserted. It only starts March 3rd of this year and will end December 20, December of 2024. There's $52 million left in that grant. Uh, to go through the categories as far as expenditures are concerned, um, most crossover between CARES and American Rescue, there are a couple of slight differences which I'll explain. The first three, four categories involved county employees. When the program first started, 
The CARES Act was mainly covering those people who were quarantined or were out on COVID. And then the CARES Act covered the overtime and the straight time for whatever people that were replaced. That's both payroll and fringe. Since then, once we, the county started testing people, the CARES Act covered the expenditures for the testing. That was any employee who was working at a testing site, particularly sheriff's officers that were either working straight time because they were redeployed from the courts or overtime. After that, once the county got into, which was December of, la of last year, started getting into the actual vaccinations, the cost shift mainly for the sheriff's office, but also for some county employees because the county also started a, a call center. So salaries involving those employees were also covered and fringe were covered by the CARES Act. Going into next year, the American Rescue Plan will pick up the cost of the salary and wages for mainly the Sheriff's Office and regular county employees. The American Rescue Act, which is the one area where they're more restrictive, will not cover people who are quarantined or out sick. Um, that's, that's, fortunately, that number has been going down dramatically since the beginning of the, of the COVID problem. When the county started to reopen, there was an issue with, with kids still being home so that, that the county was able to help out some of the people with their daycare reimbursements. Also then at that time when we started with people working from home, there was a startup course for IT, mainly laptops, printers, server, uh, servers, and, and security for it. Then once the testing started, or excuse me, once the vaccine started, those vaccine sites had to be manned with equipment, IT equipment, Wi-Fi, things of that nature. So the CARES Act, it covered all that. That has gone down since that's a lot of one-time purchases. The next two is the bulk of what the county has been doing. The Essex County is probably the only or one of the few counties that has put both testing and vaccines to uh, the forefront. We have, the county has three sites, Sears, Kmart, and Essex County College, as well as a bunch of pop-up sites, plus now a mobile unit, which was paid from the CARES Act, actually. So there's, there's a lot of costs involved, nursing, syringes, band-aids, the initial setups of the tables, the chairs, the booths, all that came out of CARES. And if there's any additional costs, oh, testing kits themselves, that will continue into, into the American uh, Rescue Plan. Um, food distribution. While everything was going on, there were a lot of people out of work. The county reached out to the um, residents of the county and they did a tremendous amount of food distribution. PPE, other supplies, initially, initial purchases of PPEs, which has now been less, but you still see a lot at the testing sites and a lot of the vaccine sites. It also included uh, the plexiglass for the windows or for the, the desks and, and the, the, the signage for the uh, sites, and things of that nature. Uh, corrections had their own COVID issues, that and the fact that they had three things that happened. They, they had to do their own plexiglass and all. And since I put it as a separate category because it is a, a large number, um, they had to do that. Their food services changed completely. It went from putting food on the trays to where every piece of food had to be put into a separate container. That was additional cost. There was uh, lately be able to be visiting with the families or the lawyers, they've had it to do a uh, teleprompting type of system, which is also included in this and was paid by CARES and has also been continued into American Rescue. Um, enhanced cleaning, that, that became more and more expensive as they started doing the testing sites and the vaccine sites because that daily among the county facilities, but also these other sites. Outreach program involved robocalls, mailings, commercials, telling about the, the test sites, telling about the vaccines. Um, this, this week, it even actually involved the, the pediatric type of testing of, of COVID of ex, ex vaccinations. Um, American Rescue has a different category called capital investment in public facilities. That's new. That's mainly right now the amount that's coming out of American Rescue is the Cedar Grove site that's going to be for OEM and for public works. Right now, all of the supplies and the refrigerators and things are spread out throughout the county. They're at the temporary sites at Sears and Kmart. We need a site to be able to put all the PPEs, put all the refrigerators, put all the vaccines. That's what that's allowed to do. Um, the county gave approximately $45 million to the towns last year, but they did not get any American Rescue. Uh, that was monitored by myself 
and my partner, Kim Smeraldo, uh, it was done on a reimbursement method. Uh, we made sure that everything complied with the, um, the act. A lot of other counties just gave lump sums to towns and said, here you go, spend it. The county exec did not want to do it that way. He wanted us to look at it, so we looked at it. The um, redevelopment authority was given, the state did not have the mechanism for screening all of the applications. This was for um, the first rental, emergency rental assistance. That was given to the state to distribute. The NJEDA, which was for the same type of program, but for small businesses. Uh, that basically covers all of the expenditures. We are expecting for next year, since we will only be under the American Rescue Cares will be gone, all of our expenditures will shift, particularly uh, payroll and fringe, as well as the other costs involved with tax uh, testing and vaccines. We really don't have, and nobody really has a clue as to where this is going, how much money is going to be spent, but the American Rescue money does go to 2024. So it's important that we retain money and maintain the flow so that we can continue with the testing and the vaccines in particular. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Abileo. Commissioners, any questions or comments? I mean, Commissioner President, I have a question. Commissioner Siebel. There's a list of all the towns and how much money they have been paid. Uh, Anthony Abaleo, are they going to be paid more money or is that the amount that they, which they have received and is that it? This is it. This program ended 12-31 of last year and they all got American Rescue money. They got their own funding from the state or from the feds, depending upon uh, their population. So it's no more money from us. That's right. Thank you very much. Thank you for the question, Commissioner Siebel. Commissioners, are there any other questions or comments? Hearing none, Mr. Palavecchio, any questions from you, sir? No, there aren't, Mr. President. Okay, Commissioner Gill? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just um, uh, wanted to follow up on, on line item on the, on the outreach on the outreach program, so so we just so I'm clear, we we spent to so the 2.7 million that's been spent already, and so that's accounted for. That's part of the CARES Act that's already been expended. That included all the mail, the television, and all the and all the PR. Yes, it did. Yes. Okay. And is there is there is there a more detailed break out of that? Um, I don't have one handy. I just went through all the purchase orders at the time just to come up with a total for this report. Okay, so through you, Mr. President, could I request a, a breakout of the of the outreach program line item? Absolutely. Great. And the ARP, so the second the second allocation, June of 22, okay. Um, I guess the question I have through you, Mr. President, for the administration is, there are other, um, and I'm sure, I'm sure also my colleagues receiving this, these kind of requests, there are other nonprofits that I think that are trying to understand how to, um, how to access this money you know, whether it be through a county or a municipality. Um, so at this point in time, I mean, the, the I know that Mr. Jackson has been um, always available to take meetings in that respect. Is there a, is there a more, do we expect a more formal process to be announced for the, for that, for this um, ARP funding going forward for the lots of different um, nonprofits that may, may, fit into one of these categories? Mr. Uh, through you, Mr. President, um, uh, Commissioner Gill, I uh, don't anticipate there being uh, any money available of the first tranche of 77 million um, uh, available to us for, for, for nonprofits, uh, candidly. I think with the new, uh, if, if we see the, re the response that we're getting from, from kids to take the vaccination, um, uh, more recently, 
and the ongoing testing, and we're going to have to do another food uh, distribution uh, the end of this year. Um, so it seems as if the, the sort of, you know, meat and potatoes of this effort uh, are going to continue for some time. So I don't, I don't, at the moment, I don't anticipate uh, any of that money, that first bit of being available. Um, and I think we have to see what happens in, uh, in June. Um, one, you know, if we, if we get the money, which we hope that we will, um, but then I think that will be the time when we would be looking at if we we're going to do anything to look at uh, doing something with nonprofits. But I, I think it's um, I think it's a bit away because again, um, the, the, for the meat and potatoes, the money gets eaten up, uh, you know, very very quickly. So um, I know that's what people that, you know, may not want want to hear. But I think that's the uh, the just the harsh reality is I don't think we're going to have anything available until um, uh, middle of next year. Okay. Thank you. Just a, a follow-up question. I, I, I must have missed it. The capital investment to public facilities, what, what was that again? That's the uh, building up in Cedar Grove where OEM and public works are going to be housed. Uh, right now, there are, are equipment and supplies and the vaccines are all over the county. Some are at OEM, some are at Kmart, some are at Sears, some are at, at the county college. This building will be used house all this all this stuff and as things need to be consolidated which is going to happen somewhere along the line that's what this facility is going to be uh used for uh, that that's the building that we already broke ground on, on the yes which, that's on on um what street is it on again it's on um, I, th I think it's grove street on grove street okay because that's a brand so we're using that so we're just building a brand new a brand new facility with the ARP. Okay. And the and the re, and the municipal money is is was reimbursed, and the municipalities had the obligation to come back, come to us to submit potential reimbursable expenses. Yes, they actually gave us purchase orders, canceled checks, payroll registers. Uh, we were instructed that we wanted to see what they were spending it on, and every town cooperated with us fully. Got it. I guess the question more so I was asking is if the number, the numbers explain, the municipality had the responsibility to come to the county. Yes. And, and, and upon audit, if anything does still pop up, they're responsible for paying any funds back. That was part of the law and part of the MOU that they signed with the county. Right. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Gill, you good? I'm good. Thank you, Mr. President. No, thank you, sir. Commissioners, any other questions or comments? Okay, hearing none. Mr. Did I ask Mr. Paul Vecchio already? If you had, I did. Okay. Yes, yes you, did. you did. All right. Thank you for the update. We really appreciate it. Uh, and as we get you get more information, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, share it with the. Uh, with the board, we appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Abileo. You're welcome. So now we're gonna to move to public comment. Um, today's meeting is a combined conference slash board meeting and we will vote on every item on the agenda. Well, I'll have the number. <laughs> Please mute yourself. However, since we are meeting remotely, the public had the opportunity to submit questions and comments for consideration and can also call in. At this portion of the meeting, the clerk will have additional instructions for our callers. Madam Clerk. Please be reminded uh, that you have three minutes to speak uh, and make sure that all your electronic uh, devices are on off or on mute and uh, you also will have the opportunity to call back later in the uh, meeting. Uh, this part of the public comment session is for agenda items only. I'm going to turn this uh, public comment session over now to our public information officer, uh, Chalo Malumba. Chalo. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, we have one caller waiting to speak. 
Uh, the caller's name is Matt Dragon. Mr. Dragon, you have five minutes to speak. You may begin. Please state your name for the record. You may begin. Did we change? My name is Matt Dragon. I'm from... That's a good point. I mean, I'll we take it if you give five. me five. You got three minutes, sir. Not five. Thank you. Matt Dragon, West Orange. Uh, thank you for K85, uh, and I hope that you'll all be voting to support the State Reparations Task Force. On K1 through 7, I wanted to read you some excerpts from a Marshall Project article entitled, Daddy, if I come to you, will I have to be locked up too? Ever since I reconnected with my 10-year-old daughter in January, I've been tussling with hard questions about being a father. Staying in contact is one of the biggest challenges. I asked her to put my daughter on the phone. I heard her breathing, but she didn't speak. I asked her if she knew who I was, and she blessed me with, yeah, it's my daddy. Are you mad at me? She said no, and I took off explaining poorly why I'd been away. I didn't tell her I murdered a man. I couldn't admit that to her yet. I also told her I loved her about 30 times. Before she gave the phone back to her mother, I asked her when she wanted me to call her again. Every day, daddy. I spent the rest of the day thinking about how I could stay in touch with her. I knew it was impossible to call every day, but I had to try. This is the lived experience of every person we choose to lock up and isolate at the ECCF. And I say choose because it is a choice. And once we make that choice, these people become our prisoners, Joe D's prisoners, your prisoners, my prisoners. When was the last time you talked to someone inside ECCF? We must ask ourselves, how many daughters, sons, partners, mothers, and fathers are we also choosing to punish by cutting off or reducing those prisoners' ability to communicate with their loved ones? So I have some questions about our jail communications contracts. Who are the phone, video call, and email providers at ECCF? And what, if anything, does the county pay for those contracts? How many complaints have been lodged about access to these communication methods? charges associated with them, quality or reliability issues in calendar 2021. How many bids were received and when does the contract end? What are the rates charged for voice and video calls as well as emails? If those rates have changed due to COVID, when will they what will they return to and when? What is the ratio of phones and devices to people held at the facility in both dormitory and cell block pods? As of today, 11-3-21, how many phones and tablets seconds, are Mr. unavailable? Dragon. Thank you. Unavailable due to maintenance or liability issues. And prior to answering this question, what was the last time such an inventory was taken? What other policies exist that limit time on the phone or device, cost for checking out the device, or withholding of phone or device privileges as punishment? I'll stop there. I have a few more questions that I'll send over via email, but I, I would like to consider the, uh, the question of how we're treating communications with family members of people in our facility and whether or That's not we should be uh, providing those free of charge. Thank you. No, thank, thank you, Mr. You. Dragon. Those are very important questions. And as is our policy, we will we'll relay those questions to the administration for a proper response. Thank you. We do not have any other callers waiting to speak. Okay, in that case, uh, Madam Clerk, we will go out of order and move to resolution number 17. Please read it into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Hassan Mohammed and also uh, Mr. Drakewitz will uh, address this item. Uh, good evening. My name is Hassan Mohammed, County Treasurer. Um, this resolution is to amend the capital budget to add uh, a project that was not listed on a regular budget uh, when it was adopted, which is the project for the county college uh, campus. And we have to amend the capital budget to, uh, to be able to introduce the ordinance. <laughs> And, and John Drake was just adding that yeah, this is just required pursuant to the uh, bond ordinance that will be introduced to shortly. I mean, uh, uh, heard shortly at second hearing. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Paul Vecchio. 
Yeah, just a question. I, I think uh, both gentlemen explained it. It's, it's pretty basic, but what is the total capital budget with this amendment? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what was that question? What does this increase the capital budget to for the year? This this ordinance, uh, this Hussein Mohammed, the county treasurer, um, this is just to amend the capital budget to include the project. And uh, there is no any down payment required for the ordinance and the project will cost $10 million and it, money will be expended and bonded next year in 2022. Be found in 2022. All right, but what I was asking is this: this is a 10 million dollar. There's an amendment to reflect the 10 million dollar project, right? Is there? And there's an existing capital budget. What was the existing capital budget before the addition of this project? Uh, I believe it was around 20 million. Oh. Okay. So this adds 10. Thank you. And for those commissioners who uh, don't see Mr. McInerney, he may not be joining us tonight, but everything that he normally asks, he's gone over in detail with Mr. Farvecchio. So uh, we're in quite capable hands. Commissioners, any questions or comments? Okay, hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Mercado and a second from Commissioner Luciano. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Absent. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Absent. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Mr. President, I think I think Commissioner Luciano seconded the motion, but he's not present. Understood. Mr. President, would you like to take that vote again? Yeah, the I think we need to move. Um, so uh, we'll move it, have Commissioner McCardle move it and Commissioner Sebo second it. Call a roll, Madam can, I, can I just ask, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. President, if, if yes. somebody's on screen and then before they go off screen, just so they let you know, so we know, make sure we have a head count because there's, at least on my screen, there's about 25 different boxes. So I don't always see when somebody shows up. Thank you for that, Mr. Palavecchio. So uh, commissioners, please understand what we just asked. If you're gonna go off screen for any length of time, please let us know in advance. Okay. Moved by Commissioner Mercado, second by Commissioner Sebo. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper, absent. Commissioner Gill? Yes. Commissioner Graham? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Luciano, absent. Commissioner Mercado? Yes. Commissioner Sebo? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Okay, Madam Clerk, do we have any ordinances or resolutions for introduction and first reading? Uh, yes, Mr. President, we have four. Okay, Madam Clerk, read ordinance number one into the record at a later time. Okay. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, again, um, Treasurer Mohammed and Mr. Drakowitz will address this item. Um, good evening, uh, my name is Hossam Mohammed, County Treasurer. Um, the ordinance uh, is to appropriate the county share of the project uh, to build a new campus for County College at, uh, in West Coldwell. Uh, the project will will cost uh, $30 million. The state will contribute $10 million and the County College will contribute $10 million 
and uh, and the county of Essex will be contributing the the 13 million and um, the project is already started the demolition started and uh, the money will be spent next year because the, the county college will spend the state money first before they spend our funds we're appropriating this ordinance to for our county share John Drake was just to add uh, to that uh, the Board of School Estimate, Board of Trustees of the County College approved uh, the project by resolution on September 21, and the Board of School Estimate, uh, as required, approved the uh, uh, transaction for this project on October 15th of this year. Thank you. I see we have uh, Dr. Boakwe. Uh, is there something, did you want to address this item, sir? Or is there something else on the agenda that you wish to address? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm here to uh, be introduced as uh, a new board member for our workforce development. However, the item that is being mentioned is directly um, with the college so i just wanted to thank everybody for being part of this uh, for almost uh, 40 years now ss county college has um been present at the west uh, ss uh, area to support the community there uh, we are always key to go by our mission by providing uh, access to individuals who want to get college education unfortunately the existing building that is going down uh, was built for elementary education about 80 years now. And at this stage, uh, it was not seven as well. That is why we approached the county for the support and also to the state for the support. So I really want to highlight that if this uh, project is completed, we need to have a facility, state facility that would truly uh, provide the necessary resources we need to maintain high quality education to our community. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, for those of you who may not know, I want to take a point of privilege here. Um, you know, Dr. Barakwe was uh, interim uh, president at the college for quite some time as they did a national search. And uh, I'm happy to say that he is no longer the interim president. He is the president of Essex County College. So congratulations to you, sir. Well deserved. Thank you very much. All right, moving along. Mr. Paul Vecchio. I don't have anything to add to that. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners, any questions or comments? Here we now have a motion from Commissioner Graham to introduce from Commissioner Johnson, excuse me, to, uh, and a second from Commissioner Graham to introduce ordinance number one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Sebo. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano, absent. Commissioner, Commissioner yes. Johnson. Uh, excuse me, was that Commissioner Luciano? Yes. Okay, that's a yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Graham? Yes. Commissioner Gill? Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Absent. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to ordinance number two. Please read it into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Mr. President, this is an ordinance named in the correction officer's dining room at the uh, Essex County Correctional Facility as the Al Mustafa Pearson officer's dining room. Uh, Al Mustafa Pearson was a long tenured employee with the Department of Correction and was well respected by his fellow officers and superior officers who remained inspired and moved by his unselfish act to put the safety of others before his own personal safety. Naming the officer's dining room in his honor will remind those who work at the facility about his courage and his long and his wonderful legacy. 
Um, Mr. Officer Pearson served 24 and a half years at the facility, and he was most recently noted for working overtime to fill vacant uh, positions or shift for his fellow office officers who have fallen ill or could not come to work during the pandemic. Officer Pearson passed away from the virus on October 6, 2020. He will be honored in May of 2022 when his name will be added to the National Wall for Fallen Officers Memorial. And we're very honored to make this recommendation to the board. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Paul Vecchio, any questions or comments? No questions. Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Gill and a second from Commissioner Luciano. To take on this number two. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Cooper has joined us. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to ordinance number three. We'll read it into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Mr. President, County Council, Courtney Gassion will handle this item. Thank you. Good good evening, Commissioners. Courtney Gassion, Essex County Council. Um, I just want to be sure you can hear me okay. I've been having some issues with my audio. Great. Thank yes, you. Loud and clear. Thank you. Um, I, I, number, ordinance number three um, is uh, a request to amend the original ordinance uh, that was brought before the board in December of 2019, which established the Essex County Correctional Facility Civilian Task Force. As the board will recall, um, the task force was established by ordinance um, in order to effectuate um, assisting uh, Essex County uh, detainees um, that were housed in the Essex County Correctional Facility with issues they were experiencing while incarcerated. Um, as the board is also aware, earlier this year, Essex County um, undertook the depopulation of the uh, Essex County immigration population or immigrant popula population at the correctional facility. And we now no longer have any uh, immigration detainees at the facility. Accordingly, it became necessary to update this ordinance in order to reflect the population that the civilian task force will now um, be uh, tasked with um, assisting, and that will be our uh, county jail population. So um, there are uh, four major points um, that have amended this ordinance. The first is to effectuate the elimination of all references to detainees, um, since it is no longer applicable, um, and, and, and change uh, it to Essex County jail inmates. Additionally, uh, just a minor housekeeping item, we did update the ordinance to now reflect the new name of the board to the Essex County Board of County Commissioners. Uh, eliminating the use of the word freeholder. Uh, we have also updated the ordinance in order to um, effectuate the requirement that was um, put in place as a result of a litigation filed by local PBA 183. Um, in response to this ordinance, um, that, that litigation resulted in um, an upholding of the ordinance um, in, its, in its current state. Um, however, it did make a request that the, the uh, task force members undertake their training prior to their um, their start or their commencement of their term on the board um, instead of within six months of them taking their seats. So we did update the ordinance so that task force members will now receive their training prior to beginning their terms. Um, and then the uh, last and final change is uh, a, a modification to the composition of the task force. Um, the, the ordinance um, has eliminated a representative of the uh, detainee population, again, because we no longer are housing that population, and it has added a, an additional member of the public to re replace the detainee representative. There's also been a, a slight change uh, with regard to the union, I'm sorry, the uh, 
PBA representative, a, a retired member of the PBA uh, correctional facility uh, or correction officer, former correction officer, no longer has to be a current member of either the FOP or, or PBA. Um, they only have to be a retired correction officer to now be uh, a member of the board. So that was a, a modification um, to the task force um, composition. I'm happy to take any questions from the board. Mr. President? One, one second, one second, Commissioner Cooper. Uh, Mr. Paolo Vecchio, any questions or comments? Yeah, just one question, Ms. Gassion, on the composition of the board. In addition to the uh, detainee or former detainee uh, board member, were there other, um, or was there at least one other board member who was a uh, an advocate, a detainee advocate, or immigration advocate that was on there? Yes. And, and if so, is that is that the person we made? I, I didn't hear the last part of your question. If so, so I was asking, um, would that person, would an immigration, if there is such a thing as an immigration advocate that was a member of that board, I seem to remember that I don't have the composition of the board in front of me, but would that person still remain as a member of this? No, that's, that's the position that was eliminated and replaced by a member of the public. Okay, and that was that's different. Oh. That was a separate membership than the former detainee member? It was, the, I don't believe there was ever a, a, a former detainee. It was a former inmate, uh, that, and uh, that still remains a, a member oh, of the force. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul Vecchio. Commissioners, questions or comments? Commissioner Cooper. Thank you, Mr. President. So, um, Ms. Cassion, this board now will receive complaints from the inmates, is that what, what they will investigate? Yes, they will They will continue to act as an independent board um, in response to any complaints raised uh, of a systemic nature by Essex County Jail inmates, correct? And what is the process for the inmates to submit complaints to the board? It, that has not changed. It, it, the ordinance still uh, is, you know, governs the process as does the bylaws. So there's several different methods by which a, an inmate may su submit um, any complaints or concerns, uh, whether it's medical, uh, you know, physical, meal-wise, uh, general conditions. They have uh, tablets accessible to them. Uh, they can submit their their uh, anonymous complaints to the board. Uh, there's uh, contact information that's provided to them that's posted in the jail so they can reach out to the board. Um, I, I don't have all the methods in front of me, but it is all set forth in both the bylaws and the, and the, and the task force ordinance, which has not been changed. All right, perfect, thank you. You're welcome. The president was muted. You're mute. Mr. President, you're on mute. Okay, commissioners, I have a motion from Commissioner Cooper and a second from- Mr. President, I, I, I had some questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Thank Gill. Thank you. I apologize. Um, so, <laughs> just going back to the, so the, the composition of the task force, um, so I understand the first two changes. The the changes the changes one just one is a housekeeping mem item. Two is just making sure that this is clear that this now applies to the to the to the detainees in the facility. Um, would the does the current state does the does, does the current state law or bill that was signed? prohibit the county from ever having immigration detainees again? Does the current state... Uh, there, was a, there was a piece of legislation that yeah. I believe was passed and I, I lost track. I thought it was signed by the governor, which, which made it illegal for county entities to enter into contracts with ICE to house um, immigration detainees. The, the reason I'm asking the question is the the or really the question I should be asking is 
does the county still have the right to take in immigration detainees? Because I, are, are we committing that we're no longer going to ever again take in any more immigration detainees? So as, as you may recall, I, I, sorry, Courtney Gassion, uh, Essex County Council. Um, through you, Mr. President, um, as you will recall that um, at the time that the depopulation occurred uh, this past summer, we did not end our current ICE contract. Uh, the, the legislation you may be referring to, and I will have to, I'm happy to look at it further to see how it does apply to the county, but they, that may address specifically future contracts um, with ICE, but we do still have a current contract with ICE. That contract was not ended what we did do was depopulate, but it, it, it did not, it did not end the contract. Okay. So I, I guess our, our under, without making this change, are we, is the, is, is the civilian task force, is the independent task force unable to um, respond to um, non-immigration detainees unless we make this change? So, the way the original uh, ordinance was drafted, it was specific to immigration detainees. Um, we we wanted to broaden it so that the jail uh, inmates were included. If they're, you know, if if the composition of the population of the jail changes, uh, the ordinance would have to be modified again. But we thought that the task force, the work by the task force, was important enough that it be extended to all jail residents. Um, and as the ordinance was originally written, it did not include the county jail population. Uh, okay, I did not realize that. I, I, I assume that, that it always, I thought it, I'm sorry, I thought it covered everyone always, I thought it always covered everyone. Okay. It, 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 let me be clear. It did include both, but with, by keeping the detainee portion, it was no longer accurate because the detainee portion is no longer housed at the jail. So yes, it, it, it did, it did always include both populations we've now brought it back just to the county jail population. So, so the, the contract, the contract, the current contract, which still exists, um, potentially could be utilized even, so that, that, that potential, that, that law that the state just enacted um, is, is forward, meaning it does not apply to any retroactive or existing contracts that the counties have. I will have to confirm that for you, Mr. Uh, Commissioner. Okay. And and if the county were to assume detainees, immigration detainees again, would this, would the, with this change, would the civilian task force still be able to um, respond in the same way that they had uh, before we're making this change to de to immigration detainees if they were in our facility? I, I think we would still have the ability to do so, or the task force would still have the ability to do so, but I, I, I think that in order to be um, very specific in, in the population that they're serving, we would want to amend the ordinance to put immigration detainees back into the ordinance, okay. just so that we, we are very clear as to the population they're serving. As it stands right now, if we were to ex if you were to approve this amended ordinance tonight, it would only be county jail inmates. Okay. Um, and the comp so and and then the change of the composition. Um, I'm reading it as one shall be a representative from a recognized inmate advocacy group. So that's we're, we're removing that or or keeping that. So. Uh, okay. So I'm looking at if you're looking under three a one. It's a it's an inmate advocacy group, a member of a good standing of the criminal defense bar, a corrections expert who shall be a current state or, or county correction officer, right. uh, retired, a formerly incarcerated individual, so that, that does not have to be an inmate, a social right. justice advocate, an expert in the medical field, and two members of the public. So there's been an increase in the member of the pub from one to two members of the public. Okay. And the uh recognized inmate advocacy group has been reduced to one. Let me pull up the old one. So we still have how many members? The total, the total, the total composition is, has not changed. It's still nine. It's still nine. So yeah. we're, we're eliminating, we're eliminating one of the positions
it's it's it reads one shall be a representative from a recognized inmate advocacy group. So the question I'm asking is, is it possible for the composition under this for this board to not have an, to not to not have a representative from an inmate advocacy group based on this change? No, you, that's still going to be a requirement. Okay. And then the corrections officer, the change is regarding the union members, the union membership. Yeah, the, there it became uh, a difficult with regard to finding a retired uh, correctional officer, somebody who had previously worked in a correctional facility, not necessarily our facility, that still retained their union membership. Um, and and the individual we had actually put in that slot no longer was a union member, so that would have been a disqualifier. So in order to open that up to a broader um, grouping, we eliminate that it need to still be an active member in a, in a union. They just needed to be a retired correction officer. Are we on the second year of, the, of our chairs? We are. The, the, uh, the, the original ordinance was passed in December 2019. So we are, we are just finishing out our second year both for our chair and our executive director? Yes, and they were all, they were both appointed at the same time. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gill. Any other questions, uh, commissioners? I too uh, thought that the governor signed that bill where it prohibited any um, facilities from uh, contracting with ICE. Uh, so I have to look at that as well. I, I thought yeah, he's the president. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Mr. Paul Thank you. Uh, my recall of that bill is you could no longer enter into. A new any new contracts but it didn't affect existing contracts exactly that's correct that's yeah. right yeah. That, that was that was my recollection as well at, at courtney gassione county council if i may mr president just one further clarification just because i want to be clear the change on the the for the task force member uh as it relates to the inmate advocacy group the language we've removed is that it was one representative from a recognized detainee advocacy group such as first friends um, and that and that is now just reading a representative from a recognized inmate advocacy group. So that's the, that's the, the change in the language. Thank you, Commissioner Gill. Thank you, Mr. President. Just one one additional question. This um, there's no distinction if the detainees are coming from other county facilities made here. So is that so I'm assuming they would also be covered under the under the ordinance. Well, we're we're not currently taking detainees from any from any location. But in, in the event that we do, like if we, uh, I, if think, we, I think uh, Courtney, what he's referring to, like Union County, for example, the Union County. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Jackson. Yes. Yeah, so they, they, it, it would cover all the all of our inmates. Oh, yeah. I apologize. Yes, we we certainly, uh, Courtney Gassione, Essex County Council, we certainly have contracts, as the board is aware, with other counties um, to take their um, their county jail um, residents, and this will cover them as well. Any any inmate that is housed in our jail would be covered under this ordinance. Yes. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Any other questions or comments? Hearing now, I have a motion from Commissioner Cooper and a second from Commissioner Gill to introduce ordinance number three. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Siebel? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. 
So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to ordinance number four. Please read it into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Zates and uh, Mr. Chris will address this item. Joshua Zates, Security Park. Uh, good evening, board. Um, what we were proposing is some uh, moderate changes in our fee schedule, specifically to Cody Arena, the Environmental Center, golf, and permit. Um, we have not increased uh, fees in either 2020 or 2021, so uh, it's been two years since we increased any fees, and uh, as I stated, they are moderate. I will briefly go through some of the changes in Cody Arena, the Environmental Center, and Permit, and then our, our golf director, Tim Chris, will get on and uh, discuss golf more in detail. Uh, Cody Arena, we're simply just trying to uh, keep keep rates with uh, similar size uh, ice skating facilities within the uh, state. Moderate increases, a uh, dollar for freestyle, uh, four dollars for private hockey, uh, skate sharpening, one up three dollars. Uh, we have uh, some new rates for pro, pro commission fees uh, that weren't in there before, a daily rate uh, for, uh, as well as a uh, visiting commissioner, uh, visiting, visiting uh, pro. Uh, environmental center, we created some new categories, outreach for small groups and families at $20. A virtual class for 45 minute session would be $75. As you know, during the pandemic, um, virtual learning as well as uh, virtual programs become more popular. We did not have a, a fee for that. So that's something we're proposing. And then in permit, um, we simply went up uh, $10 on turf fields for youth and $20 on turf fields for adults. We added a category for school track events. Um, in the range of student filming, uh, to 150 to 500, and then uh, we created a new category outdoor school permit uh, for profit. It's uh, for profit and nonprofits, and then uh, some some new uh, new uh, rooms have been available on some of the new facilities we built, uh, including the uh, Feldman Middleton Community Center. Um, that's 125 dollars per hour. That was not in there before, so we added that. And now uh, I believe we have Tim Chris to discuss golf more in detail. Hi, Tim Chris, Director of Golf Course Operations. Um, in it has been uh, touched upon some of the fee increases, but we in golf have not uh, touched our um, green fees in, I believe, most circumstances about five years. So we were due for for a overhaul, uh, essentially looking at. Um, the surrounding golf courses, where everybody's at, you know, what, how our golf courses compare, and you know, and then uh, essentially the renovation work that we did at Hendricks, we felt that um, you know we've, it's kind of in its own category now. We used to group it with Gleequake and uh, Hendricks together, so we kind of had to separate that one. Um, and then also there's there is still separation between Burn Hendricks. So now you, we, we've essentially got three sets of prices for all three of the courses. And, you know, although we, we, we have raised them in certain circumstances across the board, um, we're still very competitive in terms of, I mean, you know, when I say competitive, I mean, we're still the best deal uh, around. I mean, and I'm, we're, we're comparing them to Union, Bergen, Morris, uh, West Orange, Hudson. So, um, you know, maybe one of the bigger changes that we put in there is the senior seasonal pass. So we're trying to get that in line. We've been trying to bump that up. Um, you know, so that, that would probably be the biggest one in there that you'll see. That's, you know, we wanted to bump it up and get it more in line with everything that's going on out there. Um, uh, Josh and Dave from Security Parks, uh, we're happy to answer any questions. Mr. President. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Uh, this one is for Tim Chris. Tim, would you uh, 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 go back over the pricing that you're doing at each of the golf courses for individuals to play? I, I can give you the brief, Tim Chris. Um, I can give you the, the quick rundown. Yes. Um, week wake. Uh, during the week, the adult card holder is $22. Um, the weekend is 28. Hendricks is 28. 
uh, during the week, 34 during the weekend, and burn is 35 during the week, 42 on the weekend. Um, that's the adult card holders. For seniors, essentially, it's 18 at week wake during the week. Um, on the weekend, 28. Uh, Hendricks, it is 20 during the week uh, for seniors and, and 34 on the weekend. And Francis Byrne is 24 on the week during the week and 42 on the weekend. Uh, what was the price last year before this increase? Before this increase, what was the price? Uh, uh, hold on a second. My computer just went out. Um, so real quick, as I look at the, our spreadsheet, the adult uh, week weekdays at Burn went up four dollars. Weekends went up four dollars. Um, let me go down here. You get the Hendrix. Hendrix uh, was the biggest increases because the renovation went up from 22 to 28, uh, and then on weekends from 35 to 44. Oh, that's non quarter holder. I'm sorry, uh, 26 to 34. So basically six dollars. Mm -hmm. And week wake, week wake, we didn't go up on weekdays. Uh, weekends we stayed the same. Seniors did go up two dollars from 16 to 18, um, and uh, 27, 32 on the week. Or no, that's the non Carter. I'm sorry. Um, let me look here. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, the same, be $2, same thing. Two dollars also on the weekend. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Any other questions or comments, Mr. President? If I may. Sure, Vice President Palmares. Uh, quickly, just an overall statement, but I, uh, one who has never really golfed all my life, I had to find myself over there quite a bit recently in reflection to all the work that we've seen over at Hendricks, and I'm very impressed, and I took the time uh, to meet with the director and uh, learned quite a bit, and I'm very impressed with the program. So, um, you know, I, I think it's important to share that information as well that I think the program is bringing a lot of excitement to people who have been using it for years and these improvements that we've been doing over some time under this direction have been well received by a lot of people. I've received a lot of that feedback since it's in my district. I don't know much about Week Lake Park because I don't, uh, uh, it's not my area and I don't play, but uh, I did get a lot of positive feedback. And in fact, uh, feedback just came in a little while ago about a down tree or something by a cross walk i thought i'd pass that along at this point since it seems to have happened either last night or today uh, but i had a couple of constituents reach out they they uh, uh i seem to get a lot of information for that part so but thank you great thank, thank you, right. you very much commissioners any other questions or comments mr paulo vecchio no questions. Okay. All right. In that case, I have a motion from Commissioner Graham and a second from Commissioner Johnson to introduce ordinance number four. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Uh, Commissioner Graham? Okay, absent. Commissioner Gill? Yes. Can I hear me? We can hear you now, Commissioner. I said Commis yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner uh, Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Uh, Mr. President, I might ask um, um, to remind people to mute um, their phones if they're not speaking. I continue to hear background noise. It appears to be, be coming from a Mr. Emmanuel. I, I'm not sure. Um, yes, he muted. Thank you. Okay. Madam Clerk. Uh, 
Do we have any ordinances or resolutions for listing purposes only? Um, Mr. President, we have none. Do we have any ordinance or resolutions on a second reading and public hearing tonight? Uh, Mr. President, yes, we have two. Ordinance O-2021-0009 and O-21-0010. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. We'll read, let's move to ordinance number O-2021-00009 and read it into the record at a later time. I hereby declare the public hearing on ordinance O-2021-00009 open. If there is any member of the public who email comments for or against the ordinance, we will read it into the record, read your comments into the record and respond to you in writing. If there are any callers in the queue. Uh, Mr. Malumba, do we have any callers in the queue? Thank you, Clerk. Chala Malumba, Public Information Officer. Uh, for the Board of Commissioners, we do not have any callers in the queue waiting to speak. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Let the record reflect there are no comments, no letters uh, received, and, and no callers waiting. Mr. Paula Vecchio. Yes, uh, we did discuss this on first reading. It's, it's uh, going to extend the terms for the waste disposal agreement. Uh, at that at the Covanta facility in Newark until 2025. Continuing what we have. Thank you, Mr. Paul Vecchio. Commissioners, any questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Luciano and a second from Commissioner Mercado to close the public hearing on Ordinance O 2021. 0009. Do I have the same mover and a second to approve the ordinance? Yes, President. Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Luciano? Yes. Commissioner McCardo? Yes. Commissioner Sibo? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to Ordinance O2021 dash zero 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 one zero and read it into the record at a later time i do hereby declare the public hearing on ordinance o 2021 dash zero 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 one zero open if there is any member of the public who email comments for or against this ordinance will read the comments into the record and respond to you in writing or if there is anyone any calls in the queue? I'm sorry, Mr. President. Can you get everybody to mute those? Please mute the devices. I can't hear you. There's a lot of feedback. Thank there you. There we go. I think it got cleared up just then. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Chala Malumba, Public Information Officer for the Board of Commissioners. We do not have any callers waiting to speak on the ordinance. And Mr. President, we have no uh, emails or correspondence regarding this. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let the record reflect no comments were received and no callers waiting. Mr. Paul Vecchio. No any comments. questions or comments? Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing none, I, I have a motion from Commissioner Vice President Pomaris and a second from Commissioner Sebo to close public hearing on ordinance O-2021-00010. Do I have the same mover and second to approve the ordinance? Yes. Yes. Thank you. 
Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner uh, President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We will now move to resolutions number one through 12, which are advising consent resolution. Uh, consent resolutions one through four are nominations to the Correctional Facility Task Force and the Workforce Development Board and resolutions five through 12 are reappointments to the same boards and we will read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, first uh, a nominee for the board is Emmanuel Enso to the Essex County Correctional Facility Civilian Task Force. Um, Mr. Enzo, can you uh, please uh, get on and present yourself to the board? Yes, sir. Uh, good evening to everybody. I uh, I started work with the Department of Correction with the state. Uh, former used to be Raw Waves, now East JJ State Prison. I started in 1988, and uh, then I became the Union Vice President. And uh, in May of 2001, uh, the acting governor, De Francisco, he had appointed me to the Public Employee uh, Advisory Service Board. Uh, which basically we meet monthly from different agencies, from the state police, Department of Personnel, Human Services, uh, most of the, uh, all the agencies will meet and discuss some health issues, any occupational issues that uh, they have, and it got addressed by the panel. So then I got promoted to, uh, to a sergeant, so I went to, I was uh, transferred to Northern State Prison, where I was assigned to the uh, segregation unit. Uh, the inmate that showed they, uh, they, they, they never wanted to get along with anybody. They were very destructive. So they put them in the administrative segregation unit where this is where I was supervising the custody staff and also overseeing the image, the basic need. And, uh, you know, along we find out that some of them had like mental issues and uh, so they committed an infraction. So what we did was we had to call the mental health uh, 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 doctors, and they would come and talk to come and to talk to the inmate and basically advise us to what to do either to transfer this inmate to their, their area for uh, uh, treatment or to give them a charge and bring them up on disciplinary charge. Because there are some of them that had mental issues, and uh, all people who were doing were just write charges. And uh, these people get more and more time because, and then when they have those mental, uh, they have the mental uh, health people get involved, not only with the inmate, but it's with the custody staff. We had to work with the custody staff and and uh, the mental staff people. And uh, so we were very we we're very successful with it because come to find out, most of them, those that committed the infraction, they had a mental issue, they had a mental issue problem, and uh, through the mental health personnel. Uh, the custody staff were able to uh, negate most of the problem that we had as far as just giving them charges and giving them extended segregation time just for uh, violating some basic rules. So I had the pleasure of in, uh, working with working with those uh, mental health people in address uh, in that area. And uh, initially, I was used to, uh, was working under Mr. R. Ortiz, and he's now the uh, Director of Essex County Corrections. He was the uh, administrator when I was working there, and uh, so I got promoted and I went to, and I went to Northern State Prison, and I retired in 2017. And uh, so I, I, I worked with the state and I dealt with the custody staff and uh, dealing with the, the inmates as well as far as those and also those with the mental health issues, and. Uh, so it worked very well, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And when I was uh, asked, I was very, very uh, 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 enthusiastic about it to join in the task force. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next nominee to the, to the Workforce uh, Development Board is Dr. Boachi, from, who's the president of uh, Essex County College, who will be a representative of uh, education. Dr. Boachi. Good evening, everyone. Once again, uh, my name is Augustine Boache, and I have been serving at Essex County College for uh, 12 years now, uh, but I've been in academia, especially higher ed, for a little bit over 20 years. And uh, since I started at Essex County College as a faculty member, I've been teaching economics, and later I became program coordinator then I became the chairperson of the business division and uh, also became uh, acting dean of liberal arts and business. About a year ago, I was appointed as the interim president of the college until uh, about two days ago that I was confirmed as the uh, permanent uh, president of the college. I just wanted to uh, highlight that uh, when it comes to education, we all need to play a role in this. And uh, when I was a chair, I had opportunity to work with our workforce development uh, department to do a number of uh, programs, especially to work on supply chain management, logistics program. Uh, I'm always keen about providing opportunities for people especially individuals who may not even want to go into school for many years and have hands-on skilled um, training for short time. So I see this as an opportunity for me to share my experience and support uh, our workforce development uh, programs in, in our community. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Boanchi. Uh, next uh, nomination for the Essex County Workforce Development Board is Mr. Leota Sanders. Mr. Sanders. Yes, uh, good evening, board members. This is Leota Sanders. Uh, I am the Chief Civil Rights and Diversity Officer for New Jersey Transit. I've been in this role for the past 12 years. Uh, I'm accountable in that role for our Office of Business Development, which oversees our disadvantaged and small business enterprise programs. Uh, ADA compliance, so compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, as well as accessibility when it comes to our customers, our passengers and riders. I'm also accountable for Title VI and environmental justice, which is equity and the provision of our services, and also ensuring that uh, we treat all the communities that we impact fairly and equitably uh, up to the highest standards, uh, what not only the federal government requires, but best practice. In addition, I'm also the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Officer for New Jersey Transit. So in those capacities, I'm very invested in uh, all of the people that we serve in New Jersey, but specifically here in Essex County where we have our headquarters, uh, I consider this to be our community. I've been looking for a while for ways that we can be more engaged with what is happening in Essex County. Uh, and given that NJ Transit is a major provider of economic opportunity, through the procurement contracts we put out on the street and a nexus for businesses in the area given that uh, almost all of the larger scale businesses in Essex County to greater or lesser degrees rely on our service. There's a lot of information that uh, I have to contribute and provide and perspective uh, in terms of what is needed to uh, get the next generation of workers and the current generation ready uh, for what the future is going to provide in terms of employment and economic opportunity. So it'd be my pleasure uh, to be able to contribute my uh, professional knowledge, my resources, uh, as well as my, my personal knowledge. I have a background uh, in education. I have a master's in education uh, focused on race, class, and gender. And so uh, this is something that I would consider to be a personal investment, uh, as well as a professional opportunity for New Jersey Transit uh, to contribute to the community we are a part of. Thank you for your attention. No, thank, thank you, you for all you do. Appreciate it. Uh, next uh, is uh, Ms. Hillary McCarry, who will be the representative for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Ms. McCarry. Uh, 
Uh, we're not hearing you, Ms. McCarran, if you're speaking. He's there. There she comes. Oh. I know you're there. Ms. McCarran? If I may just make a recommendation, we perhaps we could um, come back to her. Um, if she comes back on, we have, we do have the reappointments that we can do, and we may have to come back to her because we can't, for some reason, she's not connected. Not, not a problem. Let's move on. Okay. Um, we have uh, eight renominations uh, for for this evening. Uh, five of them from the uh, what Workforce Development Board, I believe, and yes, and three from uh, the Civilian uh, Task Force from the facility. Um, the uh, reappointments are Marshall Round for the uh, Marshall Ra for the Task Force, Marshall Roundtree, Ruben Sinnons, Alexandra De Blasio uh, for the Workforce Development Board. Margaret Tyson, Joy Olubajeji, uh, Amir Hashemi, Charlene Vichnitz, and Robert Deal. Okay, you want to see if we can get her back? It's uh, her right now. I don't know what's going on. Lou, hi, yes. I'm so sorry. I had some technical difficulties here. I couldn't seem to unmute myself. I, I apologize sincerely. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, my name is Hillary McCarran. I uh, am a 30-year veteran at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. In my current capacity, I oversee port policy and planning. Um, in that role, I am responsible for bridging the gap between the um, port employers and um, maritime transportation logistics and distribution employers with the port's host communities. Um, we actively do this through a collaborative uh, program called the Council on Port Performance. And the council is made up of private businesses uh, as well as members of the host community, and it includes Essex County. Um, during the pandemic, the port of New York and New Jersey remained open and volumes are very strong. And while you read um, often in the newspapers about supply chain issues, those are most notably on the West Coast. Um, the East Coast has remained quite strong. We're not experiencing the same um, vessel delays uh, as the West Coast, um, but many of our employers are um, looking for solid talent. Um, and many of these job opportunities are um, our union positions, um, many of the opportunities are through apprenticeship programs. Many of the opportunities also um, uh, require supply chain management credentials and training. Um, we work very closely with Essex County College um, and other local schools um, to, um, to, to provide career pathways. We work with high schools um, uh, that offer supply chain and vocational trade. Um, to uh, to make sure that they know about the viable transportation logistics and distribution careers in in the state of New Jersey. Thank you so much. Commissioners. No, Mr. Paul Vecchio, any questions or comments? No, I don't have. Commissioners. Mr. President, I have a comment. Commissioner Siebel. Um, I'm very impressed by all the people who are going to have appointments and those who are going to be reappointed. They have excellent resumes and we are very fortunate here in Essex County that we have so many wonderful people who are willing to give their time and energy to help our county. So thank you to all of you for being appointed and reappointed tonight. Thank you, Commissioner Seaball. Commissioners, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Seaball and a second from Vice President Pomaris to take resolutions one through 12 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Seaball. Yes. 
Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolutions 13 through 16, which are budget insertions, and please read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. These are four budget insertions. Uh, the first one is for the 2021 county budget. Uh, this is for uh, the U.S. Department of, uh, from HUD for the Continuum of Care Program, which provides uh, dollars for us to coordinate the implementation of housing and service systems for the homeless in the amount of $333,142. The second one also coming from HUD as part of the Continuing Care Program is more tenant uh, focused um, and provide affordable housing for young people um, as defined by HUD and that is people who are 18 to 24 years old on uh, the amount of $324,586. Uh, the third one, item 15, is revenue from the New Jersey Department of Transportation for our annual transportation uh, program in the amount of $9,801,233. This is our annual uh, road uh, paving um, and uh, upgrade uh, program. Item 16 uh, is from the Department of Justice Office of Community Oriented Policing Services for the uh, COPS hiring program in the amount of $1,875,000. This is funds for community oriented policing um, and helps the Sheriff's Office uh, in that regard. And this will provide for salaries and wages for 15 officers. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Paula Vecchio, questions or comments? No questions. Commissioner, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Mercado and a second from Commissioner Luciano to take resolutions 13 through 16 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolution number 19, which is from the Office of Public Information. Please read it into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. President, I believe we skipped the 18. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Sure did. And, uh, oh, let's move to resolution number 18, which is from the Office of Management and Budget. And please read it into the record at a later time. And then we'll come back to 19. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Thanks, sir. Um, uh, Treasurer Mohammed is going to address this item, uh, Mr. President. Uh, good evening, uh, Hossam Mohammed, County Treasurer. Uh, each year, the Office of Management Budget, on behalf of the county departments and agencies, uh, comes before the board with the transfer resolution. Uh, this transfer uh, comes within the, our budget and based on our projection. Uh, of the county departments and agencies expenditures, potential expenditures to the end of the year. Um, if you have any questions, I'm ready to respond. Mr. Paravecchio? Uh, no, I think it, it's laid out pretty clearly where the money is getting, uh, what lines they're getting moved from between the departments, which is toggling between uh, screens, I'm sorry. Um, but I don't have any questions. Other Thank than you, Commissioner. That was given. Commissioners, questions or comments? Seeing none, I have a motion. I'm sorry, Commissioner Johnson. 
Does yes. that include 17 and 18? No, we did 17 in the beginning. Okay. Do I have a motion from Commissioner Luciano and a second from Commissioner Johnson? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. I think she's absent. Oh, wait. Absent. Um, C Commissioner Graham. Okay. Yes. Absent. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, that's a yes. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Siebel? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolution 19, which is from the Office of Public Information. Please read it into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Director Puglisi will handle this item. <laughs> Uh, good evening, uh, Board of Commissioners. This is Anthony Puglisi, Public Information. Um, if you remember earlier uh, this fall, we requested a similar uh, resolution. Um, we've expended most of that uh, through a variety of uh, food distribution programs um, to uh, back to school events um, as incentives for people to get, to get vaccinated and also uh, recently to senior buildings as a replacement to our annual senior wellness day, which we did not hold again for the second consecutive year uh, because, of, because of the pandemic. Um, all told, we, gave, we distributed about um, 4,500 boxes uh, to about 20 different sites or events. Um, the resolution before you is to help us continue that program, um, especially around the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, what we would like to do on November 18th and 23rd is uh, replicate our Thanksgiving food distribution program, which we did last year um, at Cody Arena, and uh, that's on the 18th, and on November 23rd at uh, the Branchbrook Park Cherry Blossom Center, uh, where we will distribute uh, 1,500 turkeys and special Thanksgiving food boxes on each day. So that's a total of 3,000 boxes and 3,000 turkeys. Um, there's also additional money in that resolution or in that contract, excuse me, uh, which will enable us to uh, continue to provide food boxes on a, on a limited basis or to continue the food distribution program as needed. Um, ShopRite has been a great partner with us throughout this whole initiative, um, <clears throat> providing the boxes and also the turkeys. That's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Paul Vecchio, questions or comments? No, no comments. Commissioners, questions or comments? I would just like to say, Mr. President, that I think this is just wonderful that we are having the cooperation of ShopRite to enter into such a wonderful agreement. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Seaborn. And I have a motion from Commissioner Johnson and a second from Commissioner Jam, uh, Graham. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Commissioner Vice President Pomares, absent. Uh, Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. 
Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolutions 20 through 23, which are from the Office of County Council. Please read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Thank you. Uh, County Council Gassion will handle these items. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Courtney Gassion, Essex County Council. Uh, resolution number 20 is a uh, request for approval of the legal services contract <laughs> from uh, December 12th, 2021 through December 11th, 2022 with the law firm of McCarter and English LLP in the amount of $300,000. This is the same contract we've had for the previous two years um, with the firm for their uh, administration of the civilian task force. Um, as we discussed earlier this evening, uh, we are continuing with the civilian task force at the ECCF uh, as it pertains to Essex County jail inmates and McCarter and English will continue to be the administrator um, of the task force and the $300,000 contract is the payment for their fees. Would you like me to move through all of them, Mr. President? Yeah, why not? Just, yeah, just continue, please. Thank you. Resolution number 21 is the um, approval of the Title 4D reimbursement agreement between the County of Essex and the New Jersey Department of Human Services in the amount of $272,946 for the period of October 1, 2020 through September 30th, 2021. This is reimbursement that we receive from the state of New Jersey for legal services necessary in paternity proceedings, obtaining, collecting, enforcing child support orders on behalf of dependent children or the county, which, was, which provides public assistance to these children. This reimbursement is for approximately 65% of the costs incurred by our office, the Office of County Council, Welfare and Support Section, inclusive of salaries. Uh, resolution 22 is this is uh, seeking the same reimbursement uh, this time for the period of October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022 in the amount of $293,091. Um, and it is for the same services that are provided from the welfare and child support section of the County Council's office. This is the reimbursement. Uh, we're seeking a, uh, approval for the reimbursement received from the state of New Jersey. Um, Item number 23 um, is an amendment to the professional services agreement to provide legal services regarding the matter of Branch et al. Um, versus uh, Essex County. Uh, this is a, a um, contract with the law firm of Inglesino, Webster, Wykesala, and Taylor for the period of March 1st, 2021 through December 31st, 2021. This is a request to amend that contract. Uh, the original contract was in the amount of $50,000. We are seeking an increase of, 20, or of an additional $20,000 to bring the total contract for this contract year of $70,000. Um, this is a, a complex personal injury action that this firm is handling on behalf of the county. Um, there have been a significant number of motions um, and discovery exchanged in this case um, that requires additional legal fees to be paid to the firm. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Ms. Gassio. Mr. Paul Vecchio. Yes, thanks, Mr. President. Ms. Gassio, I'll go in reverse order. On number 23, uh, the Legal Ser Professional Services Agreement, um, is it correct that uh, we will be seeking a uh, another annual contract for 2022? We're still in that litigation. Courtney Gassio and Essex County Council, through you, Mr. President, that is correct. Thank you. And on number 20, the McCarter and English contract, uh, is that the same amount uh, that it's been the first two years? Courtney Gassio on Essex County Council, it is the same exact amount as the first two years of the contract. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Commissioners, questions or comments on resolutions 20 through 23? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Gill and a second from Commissioner Cooper to take resolutions 20 through 23 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Luciano? Yes. Commissioner Mercado? Yes. Commissioner Siebel? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? 
He's absent. There's a uh, he's yeah, he stepped away. He oh, stepped sorry, away. I guess. Yeah. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolutions 24 and 25, which are from the Office of the County Administrator, and we will read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Walker and Mr. Hunt will handle these items in that order, Mr. President. Good evening, President Richardson, Board of Commissioners, Tim Walker, Director of Risk Management for the County of Essex. Uh, we come tonight seeking approval for the appointment of the Massey Agency to perform insurance broker services relative to the county's property and casualty insurance programs specific to the crime, pollution, and surety bond lines of coverage. Uh, I would add that. The Massey Agency is a registered and certified minority business entity. Uh, I am open to any questions. <clears throat> this, uh, you have 25 as well, sir? No, I don't. I, I only okay. have 24. Okay. Any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Polavecchio? No questions on that. Commissioners, questions or comments? Let's go to 25. Uh, Carl Hunt, CIO, Essex County, New Jersey. This contract is to purchase uh, HPE Green Lake Flex Server and Storage Compute System, not to exceed $2.712 million over four years. Purpose is to provide a secured private cloud server data center in order to consolidate Essex County servers across all departments, reducing both capital and maintenance costs as well as to provide redundancy and the backup services. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Mr. Polavecchio. No questions. Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Cooper and a second from Commissioner Gill to take resolutions 24 and 25 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Palmares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolutions 26 through 32, which are from the Department of Parks. And we'll read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Mr. President, Mr. Zates will handle these items. Joshua Zates at County Parks. Number 26 is a contract with Resurfix to provide specialized parts and repair services, services for Zamboni ice resurfacing uh, from November 8th of this year through November 7th of 2023, not, not to exceed $175,000. This is specifically to service the three Zambonis we have over at the Cody Arena. Uh, the current Zambonis we have are between 12 and 17 years old. Um, so as you can imagine, uh, they do need to be serviced. Number 27, contract award to Titan Mechanical uh, Piping to provide service, inspection, service, maintenance, and repair of ice making refrigeration systems for rink one and two with Cody Arena, not to exceed $485,040.18. Um, specifically, this is for uh, inspection services and then uh, repairs if needed. The inspection services are $2,615.32 per month, uh, which comes to a total of the fixed portion of this contract is $62,762.68. The remaining balance of the contract is for uh, the parts and labor of um, for any issues that may arise uh, that would include those repairs, which would be for the compressors um, and what have you for uh, the ice making system. 
Number 28 is a contract award to the two lowest responsive bidders to provide tree removal, tree ma- trimming, and stump grinding services, 24 months not to exceed $900,000. The two vendors are Dujet uh, Tree Experts, who would do the tree removal portion of this contract, and then Downs Tree Service, who would do the trimming and stump grinding. Um, if this board recalls, originally the last contract we had for these services was 500000 we then went back to the board to request uh, 20%, which was 100,000, which then took the total contract up to 600,000. With uh, the more and more storms that New Jersey's been getting, we uh, decided that it's in everyone's best interest to uh, then increase this contract to 900,000. So hopefully we will not have to go back to the board um, for additional monies. Um, I do believe we have both Dujets and Downs Tree Service on the line. I'm gonna ask uh, Dujets to uh, chime in first and discuss their portion of the contract. Uh, hello, this is uh, Lucas Dujet, president. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just tell us, uh, introduce yourself and tell us uh, a little bit about your company and what you're gonna do for us. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Lucas Dujet, uh, president of Dujet Tree. Uh, we're located in uh, Woodland Park, New Jersey. Uh, we've been in business for uh, 62 years. Uh, we do all kinds of uh, tree work, tree pruning, tree planting. Uh, for you guys, we're going to do uh, the tree removal. Uh, I actually had this contract, uh, I think it was six years ago, and uh, we performed it with, uh, with absolutely no problem. So I don't see any uh, reason why it won't be the same this time. Thank you. Uh, any Joshua, they- yeah. uh, any uh, questions? Uh, okay. No questions. Move on. Uh, Joshua Zaytas, County Parks. Uh, Mr. President, we do. We should have a representative from Down Tree Service also on the line to discuss their portion of the contract. Okay. Um, Michael Finicario. Michael, we may have lost you. Hello. There you go. We got you back. Hey, Michael Finicario, Downs Tree Service, licensed tree expert, 561. I am the production manager of Downs Tree Service. Um, We've had the contract for the past five years with the county. Um, And when you call, we, we came. All right, thank you. Board, any questions? Next. Uh, Joshua, that's County Number number twenty nine is a contract award to V Roach and Sons, and the amount not to exceed twenty thousand dollars for uh, deer butchering uh, services. Uh, specifically, this is related to our deer management program. Um, once the deer are cold, uh, they would then be transported to this facility where they would then be um, butchered. Uh, the majority of the meat gets donated to the New Jersey Community Food Bank. Um, the hunters are allowed a small stipends, but I am happy to announce that since 2008, nearly 50,000 pounds of venison has been donated to Community Food Bank uh, due to the, uh, the deer management program. Number 30. Is a contract award to Landtech to provide maintenance, repair, and inspection, testing, and synthetic surface athletic fields, not, not to exceed $226,850. Uh, this is simply to inspect and repair the various synthetic surface fields we have throughout the county. They conduct the semi, semi-annual field inspection, and then based on that inspection, if there are uh, recommended repairs, we discuss it with them, and then uh, either decide to move forward with those repairs or not. Uh, currently, the county has 32 synthetic surface fields throughout the park system. Number 31 and number 32 are similar. Um, if the board can remember back to the August 4th meeting, we inserted a $4 million grant from DCA for Hendrick Golf Course Improvement, as well as a $4 million grant from DCA for Westside Park Community Center. Number 31 is a uh, acceptance and insertion of the Hendricks grant, which we need uh, in order to file the application. 
And then number 32 is an acceptance and execution of the grant for the Westside Park Community Center. Again, so we can file that application. Happy to answer any questions the board may have. Any questions, commissioners? Let's move on. Uh, Mr. President, that, that concludes the parks items. Oh, okay. Mr. Paul Vecchio. Uh, I don't have any questions on any of these. Okay. Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Seaboard and a second from Commissioner Graham to take resolution 26 through 32 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel? Yes. Commissioner Mercado? Yes. Commissioner Luciano? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Graham? Yes. Commissioner Gill? <laughs> Commissioner Gill? Absent. Yes. Commis yes. Yes. Okay. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolutions 33 through 43, and the added starter, which is number 86 which are from the Department of Public Works, and we'll read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Ortiz will handle these items. Good evening, commissioners. Item number 33 is a contract to award great construction, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, the superstructure replacement of Dougal Place Bridge in the township of West Caldwell. This is a 240-day contract, and I'm on not to exceed 969000 Three hundred and twenty-six and nine cents. Item number forty-four is a contract to award great construction, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, the replacement of four minor bridges. This is also a two hundred and forty-day contract, and amount not to exceed two million eight hundred and seventy-eight thousand two hundred and four dollars and sixty-one cents. For items thirty-three and thirty-four, we have a representative from the vendor under call, Ralph A. Diaco. <laughs> Mr. Diaco, are you on the call? I'm not sure if he's on the call, but we'll we'll go back to him. Um, I'm going to reach out to see if I can get him on hold. Okay. Um, I don't I'm know. here. Oh, you're here? Okay. Hello. Thanks, Rob. This is, yeah, just explain a little bit about good, your company. Good evening. Good evening. Just explain a little bit about, about your company and to the commissioners and the two projects, item number three and number 34, that you're going to be working on. Uh, my name is Ralph Diaco. I'm the owner of Great Construction. We've been in business approximately 20 years, successful years. Uh, we have two projects for you. Both are bridge construction. Um, Dougal Street is a, a reconstruction of the bridge span. Um, and 34 is replacement of four uh, culvert bridges throughout various towns uh, throughout your county. Yes. And uh, Ralph, uh, Ralph's company, Great Construction, is an SB company and their union shop. So, thank you. That's correct. Thank you very much. Item number 35 is a contract to award ATEC Concrete, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, to construct the Etis County Historic Courthouse Promenade for an amount not to exceed $368,798. Uh, we have a rep uh, from the vendor on the call. His name is Michael Omerim. Hey, Michael. Michael, are you on the call? Okay, so we'll move on uh, to item number 36. Again, I'll reach out to Michael to see if I could get him on the call. Item number 36, a contract to award APS Contracting, Inc. to provide as-needed masonry work at various Essex County facilities. It's a 24-month contract extension for an amount not to exceed $614,200. Um, we'll have a we have a vendor from um, we have a representative from the vendor on the call. Daniel Cormouth, are you on the call? Okay, 
Okay. Um, I'm sorry again. I'll reach out to this individual to try to get them on the call uh, later on. Number 37 is a professional service agreement to provide mechanical, electrical, plumbing, engineering services for rooftop HVAC units at the Juvenile Detention Center. It's a 12 month contract to Alamo Group Consultant Engineers for an amount not to exceed $79,430. Number uh, 38 is a professional service agreement to provide design, engineering, and construction inspection services for Buford and Bloomfield Avenue culverts in Livingston and West Caldwell. This has been awarded to French Perello and Associates. It will be a 12 month contract, an amount not to exceed $399,408.20. We have a representative from the vendor on the call, John Moran. Are you on the call? Uh, Mr. Hello? Presidency? Yeah. Hello. Hey, John, are you going to? Hey. Yeah, you can speak to the commissioners yeah. about your company and the work that they'll be doing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I got to be saying it's my turn to talk. But I'm I'm number forty, so it it seems to be off a little bit. Yeah. So no, this is for FPA, John Moran. So uh, I'm assuming uh, this is uh, uh, George for Pannoni. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so sorry, not, but not yet. Know, I, I was worried. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So it, it put not me yet. out. No worries. No worries. Um. Right. Yeah. So. Okay, yeah, so moving on to um, number 39. It's, uh, it's a professional service agreement to provide design, engineering, construction, inspection services for scour critical remediation to various Edsus County bridges by Ellis Engineering Associates. This is a 12 month contract for an amount not to exceed $165,210. Um, we also have a representative from the vendor uh, on call, Kim Law. Are you on the call, Kim? Okay. Uh, so pretty Mr. much this is. Uh, Mr. President, if I may, I think the connection between the the vendor and here is not working, so that's why we're not. The vendors are there; they're just not getting through. Trying to get them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the update. Um, so pretty much this is the rehabbing of ten uh, scour critical structures throughout the county. So they're going to be installation of gabbing mattresses and concrete blocks to countermeasure the scour issues on these structures. Um, number forty. It's a professional service agreement to provide construction inspection services for various county structures to Pannoni Associates. This is a 12 month contract for an amount not to exceed $299,860. Um, George, are you on the call? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if George is, is still there, um, but moving on to number 41 which is uh, to provide professional maintenance service to boilers at various Edsus County facilities. This is a word to a superior environmental equipment corp. This is a 24 month agreement for an amount not to exceed $85,000. Item number 42 is a contract to award ABC Fire and Safety, who are the lowest responsive and responsible bidder to provide inspection, testing, and maintenance of fire extinguisher for all public work facility hoses for the year 2022 and 2023. This will be for an amount not to exceed $32,808.50. Item number 43 is a contract to award Barnwell House of Tires, the sole responsive and responsible bidder to provide very specialty tires and road service tire repairs for county fleet vehicles and equipment. This is a one year agreement for an amount not to exceed $75,000. And an add on will be number 86, which is a professional service agreement. Uh, to provide design and uh, services for the new building and improvements at Glenfield Park by Comita Associates Architecture. This will be for an amount not to exceed 525000 We also have a rep from the vendor uh, on call, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to transfer her in. Uh, Lori, are, are you able to transfer in? Yeah, probably no, no luck. That will be all, Commissioners. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know, and, and since we couldn't get the vendors on call. I'll be happy to try to answer them. Mr. Palavecchio. President, I, I do not have any questions on these. The number, most of them are uh, lowest of sole responsible, responsible and responsible bidders or contract extensions. Thank you, Mr. Palavecchio. Commissioners, 
questions or comments? I have one concerning uh, item number 36, which is a contract extension. And I really wish I could speak to the vendor or someone who can answer because they had quite a few issues at another facility. And I wanna make sure that all of those issues have been addressed. Yeah, so, um, so sorry. So Andres Gomez speaking for the Public of Public Works. There were some punch list items, I believe, at a Weecock Park, if that's what you're uh, speaking on, Regrets. It's Weecock Park, and there was more than just punch list items. Okay. Right? Punch list items are items that uh, need to be completed. These were completed issues that mm -hmm. fell apart. So those are not punch lists. So let's let's get the right uh, mm -hmm. statement out there. Okay. Uh, we will definitely uh, uh, make sure that APS contracting does the work that it's uh, that it has not been completed um, to the satisfactory that the county deserves the work to be completed in. Um, I know for sure that some of the work that they they have been delayed on or have been ab able to get to uh, was due to the fact that of the election occurring. Uh, but now that that has uh, uh, passed on, they're going to get to it. Um, so for sure, for this uh, contract extension, um, any work that is uh, uh, laying and is still uh, not finished will get done. Uh, I will make sure to reach out to Daniel Carmen and to the company afterwards too to make sure that this gets completed. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, I'm, I'm gonna uh, uh, pull this item until that work is complete. Then you can bring this extension back. So we are gonna vote on 36 tonight. Okay. Listen, questions or comments? Hearing now, I have a motion from Commissioner Johnson and a second from Commissioner Luciano to take 33 through 43, excluding 36 and 86 as one. Well. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Uh, and you're you're including 86 in this uh, vote. Right. 86 is included. 36 is excluded. Okay. Uh, thank you for the clarity. Uh, Mr. President, excuse me one minute. Don't we have to um, remove 36 to the next meeting? You, you're right, Commissioner. Thank you so much. No, no, I don't know if this goes to the next meeting. Mr. Paulovecchio. Mr. Paulovecchio. Yeah, since you took the motion, I thought you could just do the vote, and then at the end, you could, after you're done with the vote, since there's an active motion, you can decide if you want to adjourn it to the December meeting. Thank you, sir. So I would take the vote. Roll so call, we Madam vote Clerk. We vote and then we adjourn the, we, then we adjourn number six legally. We're going to vote, we're going to vote first and then decide what happens with 36. Okay, thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Uh, Tashami, Commissioner Cooper. Absent, Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Sebo. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. So now we need to make a motion to adjourn number 36 until the December meeting. Do you guys think that's really enough time to address all the issues that they have at week wait? Mr. Jackson? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll what move is the date it. Of the December meeting. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me check for that to be sure. December 15th. Thank you, Counselor. All right, if that's the case, then I'll move to adjourn number 36 until December 15th. I need a second. Uh, second. Second by Commissioner McConnell. Roll call, Madam Clerk. 
Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Please be reminded we will conduct a public comment session for the non-agenda items at the end of the meeting for any other call-ins. Madam Clerk, can you uh, give the call-in information? Uh, yes, Mr. President. If you're calling in, the number is 855-756-7520. That's 855-756-7520. And use the password 76907-POUND. 76907-POUND. Now, after you enter the password, listen for the prompt Press zero to be placed in the queue to speak during the meeting. You'll be acknowledged in the order that the call is received uh, and emails that receive for public comment will also be read after the calls are completed. So, um, so that is the information when we get to the next public comment session, Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Okay, let's move to resolutions 44 through 48 which is from Housing and Community Development. We'll read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lombardi will handle these items. Uh, thank you. Uh, Craig Lombardi, Program Coordinator for the Division of Housing and Community Development. For item number 44, we are requesting that the board accept the, the contract from HUD for uh, supplemental funds through the CDBG-CV program in the amount of $2,570,479. The board had previously approved the plan that we submitted to HUD uh, and the proposed use of those funds. Again, tonight, we, we, we are requesting that the, uh, the contract from HUD signifying their approval be approved so that we can then move forward and uh, uh, go out, seek applications for those funds, and then eventually uh, disperse, disperse those funds. Uh, item number 45, we are requesting that uh, uh, that the board approve the proposed allocation of uh, another tranche of CDBGC funds in the amount of $474,450. The board had previously approved the allocation of these funds for nonprofit agencies that address uh, issues related to COVID. And, uh, we have presented a matrix of the, the applications that have come in and we are recommending for, uh, for funding. So we ask that you approve those respective agencies so that we can then enter into agreements with them and begin dispersing those funds. Items number 46, 47, and 48 are related in that this is a request that the board approve the contract for the program year 2021 app, uh, uh, 2021 annual plan from HUD. Item number 46 specifically references the CDBG activities, totaling $5,582,860. Item number 47 uh, this specifies the uh, funds for the Emergency Solutions Grant Program in the amount of $466,551. And then item number 48, references the home program with an allocation of $1,249,089. Again, the board had previously approved the plan that we submitted to HUD. HUD has approved that plan. At this time, we need to execute the contract with HUD, which will allow us then to enter the recipient agreements with the, the proposed recipients of those funds. Um, I am available for any questions about any of those programs. Thank you so much. Mr. Paula Vecchio. No further questions. Commissioners, questions or comments? Yes, Mr. President. Commissioner Cooper. Thank you. For 
item 45, is that funding going to the same organizations or are you putting out a new RFP for new organizations? Uh, this is, so the uh, Craig Lombardi Divisional Housing Community Development. So uh, a few months ago, we received approval for one allocation of uh, funds for not-for-profit agencies. And then we, we went out and requested applications, received those applications, and these are our recommendations for that initial uh, that initial funding of four, approximately four hundred seventy-four thousand dollars. We will we have additional funds set aside for nonprofits, which we will uh, reopen for a second round of applications. And uh, again, at that time, we'll, we'll come for your approval to go out and, and request the applications, and then go through the same a similar process. So this is the first group of recipients that are using our CDBG CV funds. For the allocation of nonprofit agencies that were impacted by COVID. Okay, and then 46 and 47 is the normal funding. It's not CARES related stuff, right? That is correct. It is the a regular CDBG, ESG, and, and home funding that was done through the annual the uh, annual plan for program year 2021. And 40, uh, 44 is CARES or no? COVID, 44, what is yeah, yeah, that is, that was, that was a, a, a separate tranche of funds that came in later that are, they are CARES Act monies set aside for CDBG, CV projects. And so that was, we, initial presentation to the board was that we received these funds and here's what we would like to do with it. It was a matrix of different activities that we would cover with those funds. Uh, so. We submitted that to HUD up after the board approval, and HUD has approved that. So now we have to execute a contract with them. The next step for the, our agency is now to go out to folks and let them know we have uh, funds available for different activities and please apply for those funds. And then, so at a later date, we will be approaching the board with specific recommendations. Do you but have for a now, timeline for when you're going to put out that? that RFP for 44? It, it would, it will be sometime in the year to calendar year 2022. The regular, act, we, everything is sort of combining together. I'm sorry, I should identify Craig Lombardi Division of Housing Community Development. Uh, our, our plan is to do that next round for that in 2022. We do have a, a period coming up shortly for our program year 22 application for the regular fund. So that's gonna go uh, from mid-November to the end of December. After that we are finished with that, we are then gonna go out uh, with this other, these other programs and uh, seek out applicants for, for those funds. We, 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 we're trying to avoid too many applications for too many programs going out at the same time. Gotcha. Thank you, Mr. Lombardi. Thank you, Mr. President. You are welcome, Commissioner Cooper. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner McConnell and a second from Commissioner Vice President Pomaris to take resolution 44 through 48 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Luciano? Yes. Commissioner Mercado? Yes. Commissioner Siebel? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolutions 49 through 52, which are from the Division of Training and Employment and we will read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Mr. President, Mr. Director Monfort will handle these items. Uh, Julius, are you there? Okay. Can't hear you, Mr. Monfort, if you're, if you're talking. 
<coughs> Mr. President, may I suggest we move on to um, Mr. Coltrane's items and we'll come back. You're on mute, Mr. President. We'll come back to resolutions 49 through 52. And let's move to 53 through 55. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, purchase on aging. Uh, number 53, can you hear me? Yes. Number 53 was a bid to furnish and delivery bedding and linens to various Essex County uh, locations. Uh, the two is Lowe's and Responsible Acting Supply Company of New York and Bob Barker Company of North Carolina. This is not to exceed three hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. Resolution fifty four is furnish and delivery supplemental clothing supplies for various locations. Uh, we have three vendors, which are Home Del Footwear, Bob Barker County Company, and Victory Supply. And this is also a not to exceed. $200,000. Number 55 is from the Office of Purchasing, <clears throat> excuse me, which to provide uh, maintenance of personal computers and other various equipment such as calculators if other people are using them, um, fax machines, etc. And it is to NPA Computers of Hallbrook, <coughs> excuse me, New York, and uh, the lowest bid was $195,210. Thank you, Mr. Coltrane. Uh, Mr. Palavecchio. Yes, uh, Mr. President, all these contract awards were to the lowest responsible and responsible bidders for each of these uh, respective items. Thank you. Commissioners, questions or comments? For resolutions 53 through 55. Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner McCardo and a second from Commissioner Luciano to take resolutions 53 through 55 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Sebo? Yes. Commissioner McCardo? Yes. Commissioner Luciano? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Graham? Yes. Commissioner Gill? Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner <laughs> President Richardson? Yes. Just a reminder, everyone, please mute oh. your devices. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Mr. Jackson, do we have, uh, uh yes, uh, Mr. President, I believe Mr. Monfort's on, uh, Julie, is he there? Unmute caller 20. Uh, unmute caller 20, if you can, please. No. I'm here. Julie's okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. We're going to move back to 49 resolutions, 49 through 52. And um, Director Mumford will be addressing these, correct, Mr. Jackson? That is correct, sir. Good evening, Commissioners. The uh, resolutions you have before you, the first one is Contracts for Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act for Youth Services Program. These vendors responded to the RFP. They were selected after they were reviewed by a committee of reviewers to provide uh, services and training for at-risk youth in the county between the ages of 16 to 21. It's a federally funded and New Jersey State grant. Uh, we've been doing it for the last couple of years under the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. Um, any questions regarding the WIOA, uh, this part of it? Just, just keep going, uh, Director. Okay, no problem. The next one is the uh, high school equivalency. DRC is the state uh, sole provider to provide uh, high school equivalency 
uh, test, which is formerly GED, and the TAID test. This is the vendor that was chosen, one of the vendors that was chosen by the state, and we will be using them to continue testing all the clients who are mandatory to test on the, um, to go into training contracts. I believe the next one is the, uh, I think that's all, right? Okay. What's the last one? I missed one. 52. You have 49 through 52. And the other contract is the other resolution is for contract with uh, Catholic Charities to provide uh, training programs for the um, Title II adults, which these are adults who are seeking training through unemployment or to better their education under we owe it just like the youth contract. That is 50, 49, 50, 51, and 52. Thank you, sir. Mr. Paul Vecchio, any questions on any uh, resolution no. between 49 and 52? No, Mr. President, no questions. Commissioner, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Sebo and a second from Commissioner Vice President Homaris to take Resolution 49 through 52 is one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Sebo. Yes. Commissioner Marcardo. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to Resolution 56, which is from the Division of Family Assistance and Benefits, and we will read it into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Uh, Mr. President, <clears throat> this is a contract with Harar Cafe and Catering to provide the Concession at 321 uh, University Avenue for the, v the DFAP uh, uh, division. It's a three year of revenue agreement with the county. Um, the first year they will pay $100 per month, the second year, $250 per month, and the third year, $350 per month, or 1% of their total income, whichever is greater. Um, the vendor is from Newark, and it's just through a publicly advertised fair and open RFP. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Paul Avecchio. Uh, ju just to repeat what Mr. Jackson said, this is revenue to the county, no cost. Right. Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Johnson and a second from Commissioner Graham to take uh, 56. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. <clears throat> yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolutions 57 and 58, which are from the Office of the Prosecutor, and we will read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Uh, Mr. President, as you said, from the Office of the Prosecutor, the first is a professional services agreement uh, for uh, forensic nervous examiner uh, and sexual assault response consultant Nancy Cox. Um, from October 2021 through October 2022 in an amount not to exceed $69,184. This is, again was a fair and open RFP. Uh, this is the same vendor as last year. 58 uh, is a professional services agreement uh, with a continuing legal education consultant and public safety academy training administrator, uh, Ms. Hillary Brunell. 
uh, from October through October of to, from 21 to 22, and the amount not to exceed $65,000. Uh, she provides training at the police academy and continuing legal education for attorneys here at the county. Okay, Mr. Palavecchio, questions or comments? Uh, no questions on these. Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Cooper and a second from Commissioner Gill to take resolutions 57 and 58 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Brancardo. Yes. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. <clears throat> yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? You're on, Mr. President, you're on mute. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolutions 59 through 85, which are all commendations and memoriams. <laughs> and proclamation resolutions and we will read them into the record at a later time commissioners questions or comments Hearing that, i have a motion from commissioner graham and a second from commissioner johnson to take resolutions 59 through 85 as one roll call madam clerk commissioner cooper yes commissioner gill Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, do we have any additional added starters? Uh, Mr. President, we have none. Okay, Madam Clerk, let's move to the report of board committees. Do we have any report of board committees? Any legislative reports? Are there any written communications? unfinished business any new business okay thank you okay madam clerk let's move to public comment session on non-agenda items however since we are meeting remotely the public had the opportunity to submit questions and comments for consideration they also had an opportunity to call in madam clerk uh, uh, as a reminder, the number is 855-756-7520, and the passcode uh, is 76907-POUND. Uh, remember, uh, after entering the password, listen for the prompt to press zero to be placed in the queue. You will be uh, acknowledged in the order that the call was received, and any mails received will be read after uh, uh, the calls are completed. So at this time, I'm going to ask our public information officer, uh, Chalo uh, Malumba, to uh, announce the callers. And be a reminder, you have three minutes to speak. Please do not have your electronic devices, laptops on while, while calling in. And uh, at this time, we're only accepting uh, calls pertaining to non-agenda items. Mr. Malumba. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Chala Malumba, Public Information Officer for the Essex County Board of Commissioners. We do not have any callers waiting to speak at this time. Thank you, Mr. Malumba. Mr. President, we do have one uh, email uh, for this public comment session. Um, the email is from Chris Parks of Montclair, New Jersey. Hello, I'm a new resident to Montclair 
and I really like this town so far, but I find the driving conditions to be quite dangerous, particularly from my driveway, which is located on Grove Street. Uh, there is no parking. Uh, there is a no parking beyond the sign posted at the end of the block, which is 24 feet from the intersection. The little white line that sits near my driveway that other vehicles aren't supposed to park beyond is only three feet. I cannot see the intersection at all when I take my car out. The most I can do is honk and cross my fingers. With two young kids in the back seat, this is a risk. I, I do not and will not take. I have almost hit three, I have almost been hit three times by cars that I can't see and they can't see me. Please let me know what can be done about increasing the footage between driveways and parking lines on Grove Street. At least 20 feet seems reasonable and safe. It is an easy and obvious fix in order to protect the safety and lives of Montclair residents. I'm adding Mayor Spiller's office on here as well. Thank you. And that completes our public comment session, Mr. President. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, as always, you will be responded to in writing. Okay, let's go to uh, commissioners. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments uh, that you would like to make? You know, I do, okay, hearing that, I do have a, um, a report that I would like to uh, uh, give to the board and to the public at large. It's uh, on a meeting that we had on uh, Thursday, October 28th at 10.30 a.m. I, along with the county administrator, Mr. Jackson, uh, deputy county administrator, Matthew Dooley, and the county engineer, Sanjay Vartis, and Mr. Mr. Rick Fox, and Ellen Sullivan, president and vice president of the National Federation of the Blind of New Jersey, Northern Chapter, you know, to, we met with them to hear their concerns about accessible pedestrian signals, it's specifically the Audible crossing aids. Uh, it was a very productive meeting, and you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Sanji was able to uh, give a comprehensive update in terms of the steps that the county has already taken. Um, we were unaware that some of the uh, some of the uh, the uh, places where these things are, the crosswalks where they're uh, put, that the county was already doing some of them as they change the, the streetscape and they do upgrades. So some of the things that this uh, the Federation wanted to see, the county is already in the process of upgrading and doing. Uh, so from the county side, we, you know, we were able to clarify the role of the uh, Essex County uh, Board of Commissioners and, and that of the administration in terms of the approval and implementation of accessible uh, pedestrian signals. So this meeting was informative and a gateway to help us assist uh, virtually challenged individuals throughout the county. The uh, following action items resulted uh, from the meeting, uh, which were uh, so the National Federation for the Blind New Jersey will submit a list of intersections for requested technology, which uh, will be submitted to the county engineer. Uh, and as I said previously, some of these uh, locations are already being done by the county. So it was also agreed that a standard process, a member from the Federation of the Blind should test the volume of equipment in certain locations. Uh, one of their concerns was uh, a couple locations that they pointed out, the volume was actually too low. And then there were some others where the volume was too high. But it'd be um, beneficial to everyone if you have someone from that federation who could test out, uh, test that equipment. So, you know, that was one of the conclusions we came up with. 
And uh, well, we certainly appreciate the National Federation of the Blind reaching out to us to ensure that this population is included in making decisions that impact them in ways that we cannot fully understand uh, without their input. So I wanna thank them for coming. I wanna thank the administration, uh, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Dooley, Mr. Uh, Sanji, and, um, and Deborah Davis Ford, the clerk uh, for being there and helping put this together. So it was a very, uh, very good meeting, very informative. And, and you never know what people need you know, and, and what the difficulties are and just in crossing, being able to cross the street on our own. Uh, so I, I got a lesson and, you know, uh, on, on some of those needs and, you know, it's just great information and we want to help all of our uh, constituents. So, so thank you, uh, each and every one of you who uh, participated. If I may, Mr. I just want to uh, commend you and uh, Madam Clerk for uh, pulling that meeting together. It was indeed most informative. Um, I thought you handled it uh, incredibly well, um, compassionate toward the folks who are presenting, but also taking their, their concerns seriously. Um, we're, we're eager to implement the, the, the agreement that we came to in terms of getting things done. Um, and as you said, I, I, I certainly learned a lot as well. I think it was good for everybody. I just want to commend you, sir, for your leadership on that issue. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Jackson, and you as well. Any other questions or comments? Anything? Hearing none, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Move it. Second. Moved by Cooper, second by everybody. <laughs> All in favor. Hi. Hi. Take Good care. Night. Be well. See you Good in the next. Everybody, meeting. hope to see you soon. Be safe. So long. Bye.